evaluating some powers without a calculator and powers that have negative exponents or fractional exponents. So let's start with something like 3 to the power of negative 2. Of course, we can just get our calculator into the 3, the power button, and the negative 2, and we'll get an answer. But how do we do this without a calculator? Well, first thing we do is we can look at the power we have, just leaving the negative 2 there for a, a moment later. Let's only consider what we have there, 3 to the power of 2. 3 to the power of 2 is 3 times 3, so we know 9. Because we have that negative in the exponent, the only difference to the answer will be the, that we'll have to reciprocate this 9. So instead of 9, it will have to be 1 over 9. So any power that has a negative exponent, all we need to do is look closely at the power and the base. So do that calculation. 2 to the power of 5, well, we can do it on the side. It's 2 times 2 times itself 5 times. So what do we get there? 32. So we know our answer is very close to 32. Well, not really, just the number itself. But because we have a negative, what we have to do is the reciprocal. So 1 over 32. So probably the quickest way to actually evaluate a power with negative exponent will always be to try and ignore the negative. Just do the power. 5 to the power of 2, we know it's 25, so the answer should be 1 over 25, the reciprocal, which is simply writing the answer we had on the bottom, 1 on the top, so 1 over that answer. Now, if we had the, the fractional exponent we were talking about, or a combination of uh, those things. So let's say if we had uh, 64 to the power of negative one third. So a combination of negative and fractional power. We know that fractional power is always translated into root. So what would we do here? Well, first easiest thing, I suppose, would be to, to know that if you have the negative, it means you want the reciprocal. So it will be 1 over that whole lot, 64 to the power of 1 third. Then at least we eliminated the negative factor. Now, if we see that we have this fraction, and fraction in the exponent of the bottom number, it means we'll have to actually convert that into a root. So I plug the 64 inside the root, and I check the top number is 1, so that's the exponent. The bottom number is a 3, so that's the index of the root. So let's remove the colors and let's see what we have left. Cubic root of 64. I'm dropping the exponent 1. Now we have to think, okay, what number multiplied by itself 3 times will give us 64 without using a calculator? So we could think 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. Now, too low. 3, although we see 64 is probably not in the family of 3. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 again, 27. No, we have to go higher. 4 times 4, so yes, it is a trial and error, a bit. 4 times 4, 16, times 4 again, 64. So here we are. So that means 4 is the number that multiplied by itself 3 times will give us 64. So our answer should be 1 quarter. So the two things combined here, the negative exponent, first thing we did was the reciprocal, and the fractional exponent, which then we used the root. Let's see another example. So if we had something like 5 over 8 to the negative one third. So that 5 on the top has absolutely no need to become simpler. It's already as simple enough. Now, that negative in the exponent tells me I need to reciprocate this. So instead of leaving my expression here on the bottom, what I'll have to do is, because of the negative, 
reciprocated, which means if it's on the top, it goes to the bottom. If it's on the bottom, it goes to the top. So we are going to have 5, 8 to the positive one third. So because they are sitting next to each other, the operation between them will be multiplication. It was a division, but now if we are reciprocating the 8 to the negative one third, we end up with that times in the top. So we cannot multiply 5 by 8. Priority is always the exponent. So we are going to now rewrite that exponent as a root or the whole power. So 5 multiplied by the root of 8. The top number is 1, so that's the exponent. The bottom number is a 3, that's the root index. So let's write it again. 5 cubic root of 8. So without a calculator, we still have to guess now what number times itself 3 times gives us 8. And we should be able now to already know these uh, cubic roots and square roots of not very high numbers. So 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 again is 8. So that means the answer to the cubic root of 8 will be 2. So we can replace that and say 5 times 2, that equals 10. You can always check the calculation using a calculator.